welcome. It's so nice to have you here virtually at the Langley Centennial Museum where uh, um, there is a whole host of things happening. So let me first introduce myself and then show you a little bit about one of our programs. My name is Caroline Fitton. I represent uh, a host of uh, fabulous guides for those of you who want the language, we're called docents, to guide you through programs uh, from uh, the past, sometimes the distant past, but this time our program is to, to uh, show you through communities, past and present, and leave it up to that gorgeous brain of all of yours there to decide, okay, what's the same and what's different? And I'll bet you, you'll find out more things that are the same than are different. So let's begin. Imagining then that you are uh, the age of children that you are, it doesn't really matter. Imagine that it, it's your family, right? And you have just come, uh, uh, been called actually up the staircase uh, from the main level downstairs uh, very early in the morning. You've been called from your bedroom and you've come uh, um, whipping down. You've washed your face quickly, your hands quickly. You've piled into your work clothes, your chore clothes, this is not your good school clothes now, and you've come into the main kitchen, in fact sometimes the main part of the house is just the kitchen really, uh, and you have uh, got your chores to start. So may I show you some of those chores please. So you have come downstairs, you have quickly washed your face and hands, uh, and you have put on your uh, work clothes, and really those are chores that are done now. These are things that you do on the farm, first thing in the day, uh, before breakfast. And so, let's imagine then that each of you is being given your job. So, are we ready? One job with the cleanest bucket in on the farm is going to be taken to the dairy where you're going to be milking the cow, okay? Milk is a huge uh, uh, part of farm life because when there's extra, it gets turned into money, if you like, or it gets turned into butter as well, which is wonderful, okay? So clean bucket, milk the cow. Another of you uh, will be hand feeding a little pig. We had trouble with uh, the little piggy and mom. Uh, mom had too many piggies to care for, and so humans are caring for one pig, and you're the carer. Then we have uh, probably two of you, because we have quite a lot of chickens, who will have to go around and you'll have to talk to the ladies and say, excuse me, I'll have to take the eggs. And the eggs get put into uh, a combination of uh, breakfast, but also for the store, because you're earning money uh, for the necessities of life. So those jobs. Another job, very important, is to chop the wood. We'll zero in on that in a sec. You have to get kindling wood, which is the finer, 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 so that you can deal with the stove, right? This is the Pioneer stove. Overnight, it might be ticking over just a little bit with a little bit of uh, coal or something like that. But in the morning, you have uh, to open it up. You have to clear out the ash bin below. And this is a real stove, but it's very old, so I can't pull it out for you. I might, I might damage the um, ash bin. Uh, the ash tray actually. Uh, uh, so the ash would be taken outside and then you would be you wouldn't throw it out. You would put the ash on the garden and then some of the ash would be kept to mix with fat from uh, maybe the, um, uh, the piggy when the piggy was turned into food. Uh, or maybe uh, um, uh, another source, maybe a, a deer. Maybe a deer was, was uh, uh, shot in the, um, in the season. And the fat and the, um, and the um, uh, ash make soap. And so I'll show you the soap afterwards getting used in uh, laundry because it's bar soap, it's fat soap. So another job there is that. And um, a, a final hugely important job uh, before the, uh, the breakfast job is to fill the old-fashioned copper, it's called, because it's made out of copper, and it is the, wa the hot water copper. It has hot water in it all day long for all the uses, whether it's washing you, or starting to wash clothes, or cooking, and so on. So you have to get your friend the, um, the outside pump going, and you have to pump water. So those are the jobs. Let's have a look at what they look like. Let's start with this. 
Okay, so I have to make sure that it works. We have to prime the pump, and, and, and pioneer kids had to do this too, right? So it's not just, it's not foamy. It is exactly what had to happen. So two seconds, we do a little bit of water in here. There we go. And then, oh, look what we got. Okay, it works. And so one of you would get a lot more water than that. You would take it inside to mum. Mum would then, if you're older and tall enough, right, um, uh, you can then put the water in the copper yourself, okay? If you're not quite tall enough, you give the bucket and mum will put it in. So, one job done. Where shall we go now? Let's go uh, um, over to the wood chopping in just a sec. So here we are. We're going to be, imagine that we're in the woodshed and that we are surrounded by all kinds of what is called bucked up pieces of uh, the tree that was cut down. Uh, it would have had to dry, etc., etc. But but uh, that is what a whole tree portion would have looked like. Okay. So what we're going to imagine here at the museum then is that this portion of it has already been split in the terminology, and uh, now you have to make some kindling from the edges in order that you can start the fire properly because of course you can never start a fire with a big, right? And you know that probably from camping a lot as well, right? Uh, um, or uh, from even uh, Nana and Pops's place or something like that where they have the f a real fireplace, you know, instead of a gas one. Anyway, so we have um, an axe. This one actually is, is rather big for the job because uh, I'm on my, on my knees here to show that it's as though I'm the same height as you are, right? Uh, maybe in grade one or something. Uh, and so you would have a, sm a slightly smaller axe and you would uh, have been taught by an older brother or sister uh, and you would learn how to do, I can't do this because it's wood, you know, it's a fake one, but nonetheless you would very, 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 uh, uh, make small edges there very gently, pull off little bits like this. And just to show you uh, how, um, uh, how really sort of gentle and so on there, look at that. They break up nicely and you can imagine that on the fire in the fireplace this would start the fire really well and then you'd have other pieces of the wood that you would uh, be able to take to the stove okay so there you are that is your station making kindling then you would package this all up you would probably have um, if not a box then you would have your arms and you would have them all full, 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 like so, big, big bunch of kindling, and you would take it over uh, into the house and put it in the wood box. Every house had a wood box beside the stove. So there you go. So now we've moved from the wood shed to the barn, right? We're going to start actually with the chicken coop, which is on one portion uh, of the barn. It has to have outside space, right? So we have the chicken coop. In uh, uh, the chicken coop then, we have our favorite big hen. She has lots of friends, right? So we're just imagining. We're going to ask her to move. Not a problem, she usually scoots anyway. And so she is going to go and have some lovely grit and so on uh, to add to her, her crop and so on so she can eat well. And we're going to take, oh, look at this, two eggs. Two eggs, no, a third one, look at this. We had, let me show you, three beautiful eggs, right? And now, oops, we have to put them in here. Now she will come back because she's really quite tame. And then we have the tiniest little uh, uh, chicken, different variety, as you see, but she's just starting to lay. And so she has laid one egg, and look at this, it's so tiny. And that's how they all start, right? These are awesome tasting little eggs. There we go. And so she too gave up one of her eggs. Then we have in the main part of the barn, along with uh, uh, the other livestock, we have your little uh, little pig. Doesn't look so little, but is right because mum can get pretty big. Uh, uh, but remember, this is our human-raised pig, and so we had to uh, um, uh, quickly come out this morning, get a little bit of uh, uh, cow's milk and mix it up and stuff with, with uh, some other stuff. And we had to now give uh, uh, a bottle. This one's a calf's bottle, it's a little big. But nonetheless, the Piggy doesn't mind. And Piggy chows down on uh, the milk and so on and grows big. And then pretty soon, we'll be on the same kind of food as all the other uh, siblings. They'll be eating everything that is left over from the house. And now, the cleanest part 
of the barn is the dairy. I mentioned earlier, you, some of you will really remember that, uh, that the, um, uh, the dairy is the cleanest part, you got the cleanest bucket, and you had to then come along, and as you know, you have to have a really good relationship with the cows, you have to be nice and calm, uh, and you have to have be really well washed up and so on, and then uh, you position yourself on the little, um, uh, the little stool, little three-legged stool usually, uh, and you uh, put your head on the side of the cow, and you give it a little push, and you talk to the cow, and the cow thinks that you are the calf, and the milk is there for you to get uh, from, uh, the, uh, from the teat, and you start here, and you give a nice, gentle little squeeze as though you are the calf, and you have milk. So there you go. Chore done. Your outdoor chores are complete. You have come back in, you have really washed up well because of course you've been in the barns or you've been in the woodshed, uh, and uh, now you're getting ready for breakfast. Uh, and you'll find that actually this time we were very lucky because mom stayed in and she made the porridge. Um, indeed, we have, um, we have oatmeal porridge here, right? Ta-da! There we go, you have oatmeal porridge, real but not made, right? And it would be stirred, of course, with a, with a wooden uh, spoon, and it would be all ready for us with lovely cream from the, from the cow, from the dairy. Uh, and, uh, oh, it was just so tasty. And this time, believe it or not, we actually even had a little bit of sugar. That was a treat. Now, you might notice on the stove that we have, you know, the copper. We mentioned that already at the beginning. But there's a little something here that is rather important. I'm just going to get the handle out of the way here. Put it up here, and I'd like you to see this unit here. Just have a little look at it, a little preliminary snoop, imagining what it looks like uh, um, in modern day, because that is going to be the next chore after some of you, most of you, go to school. But this time, I need two of you to stay home with me because it's laundry day. Big work, big job, laundry day. So now, the brothers and sisters have gone to school. Two of you have remained uh, to help with the laundry because it's laundry day for the whole family. Every, the laundry is only ever done once a week. And you can imagine that some of those farm socks got pretty uh, <clears throat> messy during the week. Uh, and so they have to be laundered with a good deal of soap and so on. So let's go for it. First of all, you had to uh, get water from the copper on the stove where it's nice and hot. You had to carry it by bucket, of course, bring it over, and you had to fill the wash side of the buckets and the rinse side. So you had, actually it was a big water warming day, right? As you can tell. So then we had, uh, um, if you recall, from the ash and fat, you make soap, fat soap. So here we go fat soap, right? A bar soap, fat, and it actually has a name on it these days, but in those, it, um, if it was made in your family, it would just be your soap. So that would be used, and you would uh, make a little bit of soap in the water, but usually when the socks are that dirty, you rub the, so the uh, soap on the sock, on the dirty, wet sock, uh, on, the, on the dirtiest part, and then you put this and into um, either a little tray or you have half and you have, you have a little unit here called a soap saver. And as you can tell, of course, the water goes in and then you would just make more soapy water this way, right? But not on the, uh, on the dirty bits of the sock, right? So there you go, soap saver. <clears throat> and then you would take a lot of elbow grease. Right? A lot of, uh, uh, of energy will go into rubbing, rubbing, rubbing on the washboard until we have a sock that is clean of all of the work of the week in the barn. So now I'm just going to pop around to the other side to show you how we would do the ringer into the rinsing side. Okay, two seconds. In position, here we go. And this part now you had to be really careful of as a pioneer kid. You positioned here, and by the way, you learned how to do this when you were really little. Uh, um, it was just that you had to be careful. You had to learn how to be careful. So there we are. The sock goes in, in, in. 
through. And the slower you went, actually, the better the, um, uh, the um, area looked. You splash less, you know, when you go more slowly. There you go, because you have to imagine the soapy water comes off this side, and then here's your sock, and it goes into the clean water, plain water on the other side. So that when all of the socks are done, we're imagining actually that uh, with socks, we're, we're sort of starting at the end of the laundry, because the socks are the dirtiest, and they get done at the end. The white stuff gets done early. And now we've got all the socks done, we put them on a, a frame so that, ah, oh, okay, I can put the sock on there and the air moves through it really well. It looks like this when you're done. Look at that, right? For an awesome, right? Here we go, the foot, the leg portion of the, the uh, sock, and I get to hang it up now on something that you have seen since the very, very beginning. Are we ready? Up we go. Just as a reminder, you've washed and uh, you have rinsed the sock. You have put it on a frame. It now looks like this. And you hang the sock. In our case, we're putting it on a, a little piece of string at the front, a little bit of washing line, really. But if the, um, if the hangers are a little bit differently shaped, you put them on the, the edge here of the drying rack. And the drying rack is right by the stove. In fact, in many cases, it's on top of, above the stove. And so all of that heat during the day dries all of the first portion of the laundry all the way through to the last portion of the laundry. So there we are, the laundry done. And let's imagine now that all the laundry dried and we do the ironing of the laundry because we don't have a dryer, right? You're looking at it. So the dryer doesn't get to twist things around like modern day dryers and, and uh, laundry uh, um, uh, and so on. We have to iron out the wrinkles. They don't get moved around in a tumble dryer as they're called, okay? So let me just put these down and I'll meet you at the ironing board in two shakes. So now the laundry in your imagination is completely dry but wrinkled, okay? So we now in pioneer days uh, and beyond have uh, ironing to do. So let's have a look first of all at the equipment because this is certainly different. Let me show you. This is a, it called a little trivet. It has little feet on it, three of them, and it sits on the edge of the ironing board. Why? It sits there in order to take, and you won't believe this, a sad iron, it's called. Look at that. Now, sad meant heavy, okay? It just meant heavy, and believe me, it's heavy. The muscles are having to work, okay? Uh, so if you, as a, a kid in the family, were doing the ironing, you would be getting a workout, okay? So a sad iron, you'll notice, has to be heated on the stove. There is no electricity. You're not plugging anything in. So if you were lucky, your family had two sad irons, one to stay on the stove, one to be here at the ironing board so that you could begin the ironing and then when it got too cool to get rid of some of the wrinkles, you would switch them, okay? So, ironing. Sometimes the laundry just had too many wrinkles and all of the fabrics were natural fabrics anyway, so they responded well by being in a, a soda bottle with water and a little, uh, um, a little um, uh, head there, a sprinkler head, kind of like the, the ones on the lawn uh, uh, nowadays, and you would sprinkle with water, and then you would roll it up like so, and you would let it sit there for a little bit, just so that the wrinkles would have a chance of coming out when you use the iron. And so, the ironing would be done from the edge very neatly, etc., all the way along through all the ironing. You would iron the piece that you uh, also that you also sprinkled, and then you would fold everything up ever so neatly. Let me show you. Right, you would have everything beautifully folded like this and it would go into the linen cupboard, and actually it was also called an airing cupboard because sometimes it wasn't quite dry, and so you couldn't ever pack it away. You had to leave it in the airing cupboard until the 
item was dry, okay? And then when you have fancy little items, imagine this, look at this. You'll think this is so cute. It is uh, a tiny little apron that you would wear when you're serving afternoon tea or something, maybe to grandma, uh, or it's somebody's birthday, right? So here we go. We have a sweet little uh, um, uh, apron, but again, wrinkled, and you'd have to really work on it so that you could put that on and serve tea. So there we are. We are going to imagine now that these of the chores and home arts are all finished. Whoops, I forgot to fold this. And now we're going to take a look, not at what would be done on the same day, but what would be part of a pioneer family's life uh, as far as making the clothing goes, making the items that you need for family life. So, young ladies and gentlemen, here we are then, looking at some of the home arts that are not done every day, and yet, you know, really, I should, I should almost correct myself, these are jobs uh, um, and skills that are put in whenever there is time. So, if uh, it is a heavy season in the farm, uh, uh, um, on the farm outside, maybe not so much of this gets done, but at other times, a lot of this gets done. So, here we are, first of all then, with finding a way to, to, to make the wool from the sheep, which was sheared, washed within an inch of its life, in turn now into something that we can use as in a yarn form or in a felty form. Watch what happens. So we take some of the, um, some of the uh, wool, and here it is, and you put it on a little carding paddle like this. And you might think, okay, it looks kind of weird. Uh, if you could see it really, really, really close, there are a whole bunch of little pieces of metal with a bend in them, okay? And this is what happens. I'll go back, I'll show you from a distance. Here we are, you put them together, plunk, and then you move back and forth, and back and forth, and you are actually making the raw bits of wool ever so smooth and long, and it's getting really finely, finely carded, it's called. Now, when you card the wool, it's no longer in a big clump. It now has long threads in it. And what you do is you then start turning it into, oh, look at that. It gets turned into yarn. And believe it or not, this, in all kinds of uh, countries of the world, is done totally by hand with something called a drop spindle, it's called. And you make, the, the, the ladies usually, make the, uh, make the yarn and they uh, twist it beautifully like this. And then it ends up looking like something that we have on the table. So I'll go back and show you. Yarn like this is then used to make all kinds of clothing. If it is <clears throat> a sample here of a thinner yarn that was actually bought these days, but uh, nonetheless you could knit, and this knitting then is nice and plain, and this is going to become, say, a scarf or a collar for something. But look what else you can do with the wool. Once it is carded, show you. Once it is carded like this, you can put it in hot, 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 hot water and you can push it together, push it together. The, the hot water does that too. And look at this. You get a felty. This one's for a little kid. But we still have felties and we put these inside our boots. So that very same thing was done way back when and this is how it was done. Okay. Now after the paddles were used, Somebody came up with a fabulous invention and created a machine carter. Now, there are many uh, around the world these days, but this is how they started. And watch what happens as we go along. Look at that, you can imagine when these are uh, this size or, or bigger, in fact, sometimes huge in factories, the work that was done here 
is done so much more quickly by an actual carding machine. If we had a problem then with the lovely socks that one made, one sock was a good survivor of some work on the farm and a second sock had a hole in it. And so we had to learn the home arts of how to darn. And so we have a darning mushroom that you put inside like so. You make the whole show here and you work with the darning needle and the yarn and you get make a nice patch there uh, sometimes even with a with a decoration on it so that the darned sock looks good still because you couldn't throw anything away okay so you darned and then you even knitted little booties and things you knitted lovely socks like this for special occasions out of light 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 uh, yarn and then aside from the yarn you started working with tatting you made lace now if this is the edge of a handkerchief or even the collar of a lovely blouse you would learn how to do all of this detail around the edge it's called needlework right a huge huge art form uh, needlework involving in this case lace making in other cases, look at this. You have to pardon the little, the little stain on the side, but look at the blue. All of this blue then is embroidery, done very, very detailed, right? The beautiful embroidery. And another kind of needlework, with a needle here just to show you, uh, is called applique. And you take all kinds of little pieces of fabric that you have uh, made into the shape of the moment. And in this case, you have a beautiful little piece on the edge of either a tea cloth or something like that. Remember that you would use when you were wear using the apron that we mentioned earlier, and you would put the table together for a nice cup of tea and a cake with Nana. Okay, so we have lots and lots of home arts, and we're going to end with one that you might think is really kind of funny. Are you ready? And so to finish, we have come outside because this is where you would be on the farm at home anyway, and you would be outside for two of the, uh, uh, of the jobs. One has to do with another needle craft, uh, which is the making of quilts from leftover pieces of uh, garments. And the quilt would be put out on the fence. Let's imagine that this is the fence and it would be aired, okay? Um, it wouldn't always be laundered, it would be aired. So that's one thing, and then here's the fun part. All set. Now these rugs, imagine small, medium, and large rugs, would have to be cleaned, but there are no vacuum cleaners. And so you would use your powers of, and you would beat the rugs. It's literally with a rug beater. This is totally real. And you would beat the rugs like this, like mad, on a breezy day, and the dust would come out, and you would have a fresh all, uh, uh, rug all set, bigger than this or smaller, uh, and you would be um, uh, all set in the house, and your housekeeping would be done easy peasy. And with that, this last outside uh, um, example of what is done in the home, we get to say thank you for participating in communities past and present, certainly uh, in connection with the home and what is involved in getting a day started, getting laundries done, and uh, um, uh, preparing all of the things that you need for everyday life. It's been a pleasure uh, guiding you through some of the, uh, the home arts, uh, and I look forward to, at some point in future possibly, even from you directly, hearing, ah, I get it. This is what the way it was done before. Ah, this is the same now, but we just do it with a different machine or a different system. Again, thank you very much for participating, and we hope to see you at the museum in the future.